tonight is testimony night. Tonight is a night where uh, some of the, the people who come to Wake, young adults, are giving their testimony. And so we want to say thank you to them for being bold and courageous enough to come up on stage and to be vulnerable and to share what God's done in their life. So let's, be, uh, let's honor them as they come. And the first one to come up here is Hayden. Let's give it up for Hayden. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you hear me? <clears throat> All right. All right. Now I want to give you guys my, my testimony. It's what I've, you know, it's been two years ago. I, I hold this long, but I want to tell you guys what happened. My testimony was two years ago, I want to join the Marines because I want to prove that I could do all things, you know. And I was the best shape of my life. I tried to get recruited, then, you know. The, the point of this, I want to tell you guys right now that God works in mysterious ways. I'll tell you that. The reason why is because I was trying to get recruited to Marines, and he, he told me I couldn't. It's because I have asthma. I had asthma and, you know, a long history of terrible asthma. And I was devastated. I was crying, you know, because I want to prove to people I could do it, you know. But, you know. Like two weeks later, my mother told me to go to Walmart and get some errands for her, you know. And I went to Walmart, bought, bought the things I am supposed to get. And I sat down on those, um, you know, the step-like uh, curves on the Walmart wall, you know. And it was like two, three minutes. I don't know. I was not keeping time. But um, this man came up. He was a Walmart employee working. He was an old African-American senior citizen, <clears throat> he came up to me and was like, what's wrong, young man? I told him about the Marine and all that. I was like, well, maybe God doesn't want you to become a Marine. What else you good at? I told him I was good at football. You know, I was good at football in high school. Well, why don't you join Greyhound, like do the walk-on at Greyhound football? I'm like, okay, that sounds a good idea. You know, summer came by, you know, then... I tried out for the Greyhounds, you know. I want to become an old lineman, Greyhound player. You know, and those guys were big, I'll tell you that. The Samoans, man. <laughs> but, um, you know, it was a week, you know, it was a week that I tried out, and they were, they were cool. They were, they were big guys, big, cool guys, you know. Then one day on Friday, the head coach, football player, football coach, Coach Lynn, he was like, uh, Monty, can I talk to you in my office, please? And he told me that based on how many players we got, there were not enough lockers for everyone. So I'm sorry. I'm going to let you and a couple players go. As soon as I walked out those doors, I was crying again because football was the only thing I got left. I went back home get all my stuff and move to Guadalupe. Then I guess I forgot to get like a clothes, you know, hampering or whatever they're, they're called. Went to get one at Walmart again. I sat down because I was still upset. Then the same African-American man showed up. He said, what's wrong now, boy? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I got cut from what? Football. Oh, Maybe God doesn't want to play football again. Maybe God doesn't want, want you to play football. I'm like, well, that's the only thing left I can do, you know. Then he says, well, maybe he can be coaching, you know. I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? Go ask your head coach. And then he just tapped my shoulder, you know. And, you know, it felt like maybe that was some solid advice. So I... So it was it was spring. I came talk to my coach Ramirez because I saw, you know, his 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 daughter is playing for softball last year, and I talked to him. He was like, "Yeah, that sounds a good idea, Monty." So I did all you know paperwork and all that, blah blah blah. I was coaching for the season last fall, and it was great. It was awesome, you know. But then you know, I tried to find the find trying to find the man, you know. Tell him thank you for helping me out. 
And and I walked to the uh, you know where the uh, return centers right you know or trade in spot. Yeah, I asked him. He was like, you know, I was saying, hey, you know where this guy is? He's he's African American. He looks like he might be in his fifties or forties. You know, something like that. I can't tell, but yeah. But um, he said, sir, we don't have anyone that age working here. You know, I'm like, huh? Like looking at her, you know. <clears throat> then. It was like, it was scary to me, you know. It was like they never seen this guy before. He never shown, you know, his, you know, you know. I looked all over the uh, employee, you know, picture every year. He was never in one of those. It's crazy. Yeah. But then, you know, that was before Wake. Then, then I went to Wake U with a friend of mine, you know, because it's been a long time since I haven't gone to church because I was working during the weekends. You know, and I went to, you know, I went to Wake U and Casey. He was awesome. Everybody who was working at Wake U, they were awesome. And I felt like God's presence was there, man. You know, it was awesome. And, you know, I was crying. I was, I was still crying, you know, begging for, yeah, don't make fun of me, man. Big guys do cry. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know, when they say, you know, Something about uh, forgiveness and all that. I walked up in there, and I begged for God for forgiveness. And this moment of that, I was forgiven. I was forgiven. <laughs> then, as soon as they say, "When can I come start? Come to wake?" They say 7:30 on Monday, and I'm like, "That's a perfect time for me." So I came to wake. And it was amazing. And I want to keep, you know, I, I felt like a, a fat kid eating, you know, the same flavor all again and again and again. Just like Wake, I want to worship and again and again and again to right now, today. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to be like a suck up to you guys, but I want to be the, the guy who's going to, you know, be born again and die as a Christian and live in eternity with God and Jesus and everyone who deserve it. That's most of my testimony, but I like to say whoever is going through struggles and all that, God works in mysterious ways and has plans for every single one of you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hayden. Some love, bro. That was good. Good job, man. Awesome. Okay, um, now we have Callie. Is this okay? <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Callie. And, well, whenever I first decided to submit my life to God and everything, it was, I was still back in high school. Um, in my high, I, well, first off, I wasn't raised in church or anything. I never went to church on Sundays. I didn't do anything, and in my high school years, I was kind of, you know, I was just doing stuff I shouldn't be doing, and I was searching for, like, a, like, a feeling, feeling. <laughs> I wanted something more. I was searching for something for, like, peace, and, you know, I couldn't find it, and I was struggling pretty bad, like, in my high school years, and finally, I had um, a couple of friends, and they always went to um, a Bible study Wednesday nights at the Baptist church. And so I started going, and as I started going, you know, I started to feel, like, I started to feel happy, even being around, like, the company and, like, the positive, like, just the people, you know, it was really good. And, you know, I kept going for a couple of months, and I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Falls Creek, Oklahoma, I don't know, but it's a church camp, and I decided to go, and it was for a week, and whenever I was there, I mean, that was the moment I just felt God's presence, and I knew he was there, and, you know, it just, I finally felt that peace that I had been searching for, and it was just amazing because I had been struggling between family and friends, and just, even if it was going out too much and doing things I shouldn't be doing, I finally found what I had been searching for, and that was whenever I finally understood, like, you know, God's grace isn't cheap, and, you know, he died for me, and, you know, that was just amazing. Whenever you finally realize that and accept him as your savior, that was, you know, that was, it was amazing. 
And, you know, I, I came to Portales, and my first year here, I never came to Wake. I didn't really hear about it. And this year, I started coming to Wake more, and I kind of didn't talk to anyone. I would stood more to myself. And I started struggling with a lot this year. And, you know, I ended up um, with a job at the brewery. And it was really great because, you know, one of our messages that we had was about Friends of Destiny. And I had been struggling, you know, I kind of parted from God. And, I mean, I still came to church and I still loved him, but that relationship was definitely, it was hurting. And I met um, Brooke and Casey and Leal and, you know, just talking to them and having those friends of destiny and that support system to get through, like, the difficult times, you know, that, it put me back on the right track to, you know, who my Savior is and who I'm going to for the troubles and the hard times. And, you know, and it's just amazing. And now that I've found those friends of destiny and I've put my life back at seeking God and searching for him, I finally feel that peace again, and it's awesome. And I can see God working my life I'm through my beautiful daughter, um, my job, and, you know, just all of the people I have in my life. And, you know, God is great, and when you finally accept him as your Savior, he really does amazing things in your life. Thomas. You don't need no intro, bro. Uh, just so you know, my real name is Franklin. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> and if your name is Franklin, I do. That name's awesome. I just am a little nervous. <laughs> um, so, uh, <laughs> but um, before Wake, um, I was kind of just a, a walking body. Uh, no direction, nowhere to go. Um, my junior semester, I ended up failing seven classes over a course of two semesters, and I lost my entire financial aid. Um, you know, I didn't have hardly money. I planned to drop out of school, actually. And, um, you know, the first thing I turned to was uh, drinking. You know, if some of you didn't know me or had seen me before today, it was probably at a party. Um, it's the first thing I thought to turn to. But, um, you know, drinking... Um, it's kind of like a cut. You can put a, you know, you can put a Band-Aid on a cut, but the cut's still there and the pain's still there. Um, it's not really doing much. But um, last December is when I uh, came to Wake, and you know, it was it was great. Uh, the people here are so welcoming. I mean, it's amazing. And little by little, uh, I didn't know that it was just opening a doorway to my heart. And last December, I went to a Christmas Eve mass in Denver, Colorado, and I bawled my eyes out. <laughs> in the presence of the Lord, in front of tons of people, which I, I would never do. <laughs> um, and coming to Wake, I can thank Wake for that completely, uh, for opening my heart. And now in my life, um, continuing to come to Wake, continuing the path, or path <laughs> that Jesus has laid out for me, God has laid out for me, um, I have been blessed beyond compare. Um, I've been through several job interviews and I've been told, you know, with the grades I've had, uh, I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough. And I kept praying, and I went into a job interview a few weeks ago, and I came out with a career. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, God's grace is amazing. But on this walk, um, you get tested every day, especially college students. Um, it's not easy. And I have a few verses for you. And this one's the parable of the sower. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Listen, then, to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. 
This is the seed sown along the path. The one who receives the seed that fell on the rocky places, the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what was sown. And you know, um, I want to ask you as college students, where, what, what type of soil are you going to be? Um, we are going to be tested daily, and you know, it's not easy. But the good thing is, God, Jesus, they love our weaknesses, and they thrive on it. And here's another one for you. Uh, this is from 2 Corinthians. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sakes, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And we are all weak at times, and I know it's hard. But uh, if you look next to you, uh, everyone's on the same walk. And I guarantee you they'd be glad to walk with you and pick you up if you need help along with God and along with Jesus. Um, you know, I love all of you guys. I may not know you personally, but you've been a great help to me on this walk. And I'm going to end this with uh, my favorite verse, just personally, which is Philippians 121. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Man. I want to I want to talk for a second, just real quick, because I know it's finals week. We want to get you guys in and out, um, but I want to touch on what Thomas said earlier when he was talking about soil. I want to say, what soil are you choosing to be? What soil are you choosing to be? Because I want to ta- take a second. I want to look at that scripture, that passage. Um, if we can get that up on the screen, Matthew chapter thirteen, or one through nine. Um, hopefully we got it. Tell me I got it. If we don't have it, okay. Um, then I'm going to read it for you. Is that okay if I read it for you? Okay. Um, Jesus is telling him a parable. It says, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up. But since they had no depth of soil, when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Okay, Jesus spoke in parables, right? And so the disciples, you read Matthew chapter 13, they they begin to ask him, like, what what does that mean? What is why do you speak in parables? What is what why do you do that? And he begins to explain, look, not everybody's gonna get it, but hopefully you do. If you really think about it, you'll get it. If the Spirit of God reveals it to you, you'll understand. And he said, look, I'm just going to go ahead and explain this parable to you. It's like one of the the many, not very many did he sit and explain after. But this one he did. He says in uh, verse 18, hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path okay so it's kind of like Jesus we're preaching about Jesus we're seeing life change testimony is happening and then as it's spoken and as it ta- is talked about you're the soil that's the 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 path that's like the cement that's like there's no there's no way of growing because you've just rejected it saying no but that's okay. If you're going to reject it, that's fine. That's you. And then he goes on to say, um, this is what was sown along the path. Then he says, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. 
It's like you're sitting in a service, and we have a, we have a skit played out, and, and it's like, oh, man, it's emotional. And then you're like, oh, man, I want Jesus. I want all of his grace. I want all of his power. I want everything that he has for me. And you're so pumped, and you're filled with joy, and you're like, yeah, baby, this is going to be good. Thank you, Jesus. And you experience on it on an awesome level. But then watch what happens. Since it was on rocky ground, this is the one who hears it and receives it with joy, yet has no root. No root. It endures for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the world, immediately he falls away. Now, I've been around a lot of young adults, especially here lately, who receive it with joy, who get pumped up and excited about Jesus. Then all of a sudden, something happens in their life. Death of a family member, sickness, depression. Life hits you, and life isn't, isn't fair. Life hurts. And then when it hurts, instead of having a deep root in what Jesus has called us to and staying rooted with friends of destiny who are pushing us towards Christ, we go to the things like the skit was doing. We go to our boyfriend or girlfriend, and we're like, I'm going to find hope in you. And then all of a sudden, that's not enough. And then we want money. And then we want alcohol, drugs. And we continue to go for that. And then all of a sudden, we're like, God, I tried God out, but you know what? He's just not for me. He's just not for me. Well, I would say you're the soil that was, that's the rocky ground. You have no depth. You have no root. And then the other one was weeds, right? Weeds choked it out. Now, I'm just going to read it. I'm just going to go through it so I don't have to keep doing this and try to find my scripture. Um, Yet while he has no root in himself, he endures for a while. And when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the world, immediately he falls away. As for the one that was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and proves it unfruitful. Proves it unfruitful. The things of this world, man, I don't got enough money. I don't have that truck. I don't have that car. I don't have what I want in this world. And then you start pursuing that instead of Jesus. And what happens? Fall away. You fall away. And while the whole time, God's like right here saying, hey, look, I'm right here. Come to me. My arms are open wide. I'm available if you come. I'm available if you come to me. But see, what happens is we then decide to do that, right? We're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then you guys saw the skit. She starts running towards Jesus. And then all of a sudden, she's getting attacked with all this. Everybody's telling her what she used to be like and what she was just doing. And that's the devil, by the way. He's the accuser. He's going to tell you what you've done wrong. He's going to keep slamming in your face when Jesus is saying, look what I've done right. And I can bring that healing. I can bring that health back to you. You just have to fight and you have to get through it. Don't be the soil that's on rocky ground or on the thorns. Because if you're on rocky ground, as soon as struggle and persecution comes, you feather away. You're just like, I'm done. I can't do it. I can't handle it. But Jesus says, if you pursue me, if you run after me, I will take care of you. And see, what's great about this is he says, now the good soil is a soil that understands that this life is full of pain. This life is full of hurt, and this life of a Christian is a call to come and die, to get over your flesh, and to pursue him. Now, I want to look at Ephesians chapter 6. We don't got the scriptures up here, so give me a second. I'm going to flip over to it. Oh, boom. Oh, no, I didn't put my marker in here. I thought I did. Ephesians chapter 6. Somebody help me out. Somebody praise the Lord while I find it. Oh, man. I did all that with one finger, guys. Okay. Um, the whole armor of God. I want you to notice something. We were in our small group with our men not too long back, and I brought something up that all the dudes were like, oh, my gosh, you got to talk about that. So I'm like, okay, we'll talk about it. 
whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, powers, and authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Now, I want to I look at this for a second. The whole armor. What is that? The whole armor. Not just a piece of it. The whole armor. I keep messing up. That's why I need it on the screen. The whole armor of God. That you may withstand the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand. Stand, therefore, having fastened the belt of truth, God's word, truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Keep alert with all perseverance. I want you to notice you got the helmet, you got the shield, you got the belt, you got the breastplate of righteousness, you got the, the, the shoes, the gospel of peace, you got the sword. You notice something about that? There's nothing protecting your back. As long as you're facing the battle, and as long as you're running after and fighting the battle, you will not die. You will not be destroyed. But as soon as you turn away and as soon as you start to bail and run, you're done. You're done. See, the thing is, is when you become a Christian, when you say yes to Jesus, there's this big old target that's just been painted on you, and the enemy's going to come at you. But, oh, I don't want to be a Christian if that means the enemy's going to attack me. Okay, let me say this. Why would the enemy need to attack somebody who's not living in God's will? Who's going to be in the dwelling place of hell anyways? Why would he need to attack them? He only attacks the ones who are pursuing righteousness, the only ones who are pursuing Jesus and following his way because he doesn't want them to succeed. He doesn't want them to be in the perfect will of Christ. So my challenge for you today is just like Revelation 3, 16, 17, 14. And the, church, and the angel of the church in Laodicea write the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works. This is, I love this. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I would rather that you were cold or hot. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And I could elaborate on that forever, but I'm trying to rush for time. I want to tell you something right now. You can't be a Christ follower and still pursue the things of the world. You cannot say yes to Jesus and pursue the things of the world. Because why? Armor of God, right here. Boom, taking on the battle. Things of the world, right here. And if you're like this... As soon as you turn and look at the things of the world, you're going to get hit. You're going to get smashed. But here's the thing. We were reading in, in Galatians, I believe. No, Corinthians. Hold on. You're pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. You're struck down, but you're never destroyed. You are blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. So the road of a Christian Christ's follower is not easy. But I tell you what, one day when we stand before the Lord, I hope that your armor is beat up. I hope it's got scratches all over it. I hope your sword's all rigid and full. I'm sorry, I'll say that. Full of blood, baby. You attacked the enemy. You struck back. You didn't cower down. You didn't run away. And you didn't look to the things of the world. Instead, you pursued what God had for you and saw the obstacles as an opportunity for Jesus to move on your behalf. Tonight, no matter where you're at, what's going on, I'd love to encourage you. We're going to take three weeks uh, off of not having a wake service, and then we'll begin a wake service, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. 
But during this time, don't stop pursuing Jesus just because life gets hard. You're in your finals right now. Some of you who are not in school, this is a young adult ministry too. Life is going to get tough, man. Let me tell you, life is not easy. But when you submit to Jesus, he gives you the strength, right? His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Don't be afraid to be weak. Don't be afraid to be weak. We're here in a second when we just dismiss and everybody's going to eat marks. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a couple of our leaders up here. We would love to pray with you. But right now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you have the kind of strength to endure the battle, the kind of strength that doesn't quit, that doesn't look to the things of this world, and that you are the good soil in which you multiply what God has spoken to you. A hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, you spread what God has given to you. Let's pray. Jesus, right now we come before you. We thank you for allowing us to come as we are. For always being there ready with open arms to receive us, even when we look away from you. Even when we stop fighting. You're still there. You're the everlasting Father, the everlasting love that endures forever. So Jesus, we submit to you. We say we're sorry for not focusing on you. We say we're sorry for cowering down and turning to the things of the world and getting attacked and defeated and putting the blame on you when it was never your fault. Jesus, we return to you tonight. And we walk in your ways according to your truth. And when we are in your ways, living by your truth, then we are in your perfect will. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give God praise for who he is? He's is awesome. Awesome, man. Um, how many of you guys have enjoyed Wake this past year? It's been good, man. It's been good. Um, we are, uh, if you could bring up the lights a little bit, you can keep them dim. I should turn my hat this way so I can see all the, my eyebrows aren't thick enough yet. Um, I'm doing, well, like, you know how, like, it's the power brow thing right now. It's in. Never mind. Y'all, y'all understand on Pinterest. Um, no, but what we're doing, guys, uh, God has opened up some doors, and it's going to be really good. Pastor Zach, would you join me on stage? Um, there's a microphone right there on that. That would be perfect for you to speak on. Just got to hold the bottom power button. Um, God has presented some awesome opportunities. Um, I will be uh, stepping into a position of executive pastor or associate pastor overseeing all of our ministries here at Trinity Church and making sure that the health of uh, each leadership team and the vision is carried out. I will still be speaking, um, hopefully a lot more than more than not. No, I'll be speaking. I love to speak and preach, but I'll be preaching on weekends, you know, G3, uh, Wake. I'll even be up there in the, the, with the kids on Sunday sometimes, too. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. But um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pass the torch for our Wake Young Adult Ministry to Pastor Zach Washburn. Thank you. We are, we are very excited. Can we make sure the yellow is on? Okay, is it good? Awesome. It is on. Hey, you want to give them a spill of what's what's to come during the summer? Yes. Um, so it is uh, It is absolutely a privilege uh, to have the opportunity to, uh, to, to come and minister to you guys. How many of you know God's a dad? God's a dad. He's, he's a good dad, right? He's that good one. He's, he's that dad that's always cool, right? He's always good. And, uh, and so God, God has kind of led me on a journey, but I, I'll tell you what, I haven't always had the opportunity to pastor, but, but for the last nine years, I've had an opportunity to be a dad. And how many of you know that, that when a dad comes alongside you, you can do anything? 
And so I bless God for this opportunity. I'm really, really excited to just get to come alongside you guys and encourage you guys. You guys are not at a time in your life where you need someone telling you what to do. You guys are at a time in your life telling you that you can do it. And I love that about this young adults ministry. And I, and I really, really am humbled and appreciate you guys. This is my lovely wife, Vanessa, back here. Honey, stand up. Stand up. She is the mortar that holds it all together. Bless God. Uh, otherwise, it'd be brick on top of brick. She really does hold it all together. And, uh, and we are very excited. Thank you guys for having us. This summer, we're going to be uh, moving in a direction to cultivate a season in your life that most of you may not even know that you're in. How many of you know about seasons? I love seasons. Bless God, when, it, when he started teaching me about seasons, I can just look around the room and I can tell you where people are at. And so we're going to start cultivating that in your life, uh, in your season. And we're going to see if we can develop relationships so that you guys can move effectively into your next season in life. Amen? Yeah. Good. Amen. Good. Yeah. So what's going to happen this summer? is um, so for the next three weeks, starting next Monday, the next Monday, next Monday, we're not going to have anything, right? It's going to be a time for you to go visit your family um, and especially the leadership team, go visit your family, be a part of, part of home and, uh, and, and really love on them. And, and then when you come back, uh, June 6th, it's a Monday night. During the summer, we're going to call it Wake Summer Nights. And we're going to have at 7 o'clock, instead of 7.30, 7 o'clock. Follow us on Instagram, on Snapchat now. You know, we're stepping up in the world. Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter, okay? Follow us on all of those so you can stay updated. But what we're going to do during summer nights, um, I don't want to give it all away, but it's not going to be a full-blown service. It's going to be something awesome that's going to take you personally to the next level, just as Pastor Zach was uh, explaining. We're going to have about an hour, hour and a half service, depending on what the, the plan is that night. But we'll be breaking up into groups that night. And it's just, I promise you, you do not want to miss that. So if you're here during the summer, you want to be here Monday nights, starting in June at 7 p.m. Um, anything else? I don't think so, Pastor. Okay. Okay. I don't think so. Awesome. Well, guys, we will have a couple of our leaders. We do need three people of our leaders. Sorry, Mark just texted me that we will need some people in the back to help serve those food. So three, if you're part of the leadership team, please go and do that. Um, what we need, though, we're going to have our leadership team up here. We're going to turn on some prayer music. Man, if you feel like this message was for you tonight, the thing was for you tonight, everything that happened, um, when it comes to being you choosing what soil to be, we want to pray with you. We want to believe that God is doing something awesome, and he can do something awesome if you are willing to follow his plan for your life. But, Zach, would you pray a blessing over us as we go? You bet. Father God, we love you because you are truly the God that goes before us. And you never get tired. You never sleep. You've never turned your back on us, God, and we know that you'll never leave us. We bless you, God, because... Because your story has a cross in it, but it also has an empty grave. We know that you're alive and well, God, and that you love us and you are for us and not against us. God, we, we look to follow after you and we bless your name forever and on high. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.